recall the cell cycle. When cells are dividing, um, either during development where they're undergoing mitosis um, to make more cells, or during gametogenesis when they're undergoing meiosis to make gametes, cells undergo the cell cycle where they alternate or cycle through M, which stands for mitosis or meiosis, G1, which stands for the gap phase, S, which stands for synthesis, when DNA is synthesized or replicated, and G2, which is gap 2. Now, S is when DNA is rep replicated. However, it's implicit that in G2, M, and G1, DNA is not replicated. And that seems sensible since um, replicating DNA is very costly. It uh, uh, consumes um, uh, energy in the form of ATP and it consumes uh, deoxynucleoside triphosphates, um, uh, the, the building blocks of DNA, and it would not be very uh, uh, fruitful to synthesize DNA when you don't need to synthesize DNA. And therefore, um, cells have control mechanisms that determine when uh, DNA is synthesized, or rather where, which restrict the synthesis of DNA to the S phase. Now, um, one thing that happens is that during gap phase one, two proteins called CDC6 and CDT1 are synthesized. And um, we are using the example of yeast uh, to illustrate how the uh, synthesis of DNA is controlled during the cell cycle. And during gap 2, CDC6 and CDD1 are degraded or destroyed. Okay. And this implies that CDC6, CDD1 are available during the S phase, but are not available during G1, G2, or M. And molecularly, how control is achieved is that, let's say, this is my chromosome, and this is the origin of replication. And Yeast are eukaryotes, um, uh, so unlike bacteria, which have uh, circular chromosomes, yeast chromosomes are linear. This origin is recognized by a complex of proteins called the origin recognition complex, or ORC. And once the ORC has recognized the origin of replication, and, and um, as an aside, the origin of replication is basically just a, a, a pattern uh, of DNA sequence, a, a particular combination of uh, um, uh, nucleotides that is recognized by the origin replication complex. At this point, CDC6 and CDT1 bind this complex, the origin recognition complex. Evidently, this only happens in S phase. So 
since that is the only time that CDC6 and CDT1 are uh, available. And this group of proteins, the ORC, CDC6 and CDT1 together recruit helicase and what helicase does is it opens up the double helix it breaks the hydrogen bonds and opens up the double helix and that's how you get the replication forks um, now all this entire process um, as pointed out will only happen in S phase and that's because um, when you're not in S phase you don't have CDC6 or CDT1 and if you don't have these proteins you do not recruit helicase if you don't recruit helicase then the double strand DNA is never opened up there is no replication fork and therefore DNA synthesis cannot be carried out next let us discuss the uh, replication of linear chromosomes such as yeast or, or mammals or humans and, and so on um, and a particular problem that comes up when we are trying to replicate linear chromosomes so here we have a um, two replication forks and the replication forks are moving in towards the left and the right and let's say the top strand is 3 prime over here and 5 prime on the right and therefore the bottom strand which is anti-parallel to the top strand is going to be 5 prime on the left and 3 prime on the right um, to initiate replication you will need primers and since the primer is going to be anti-parallel to the template strand it's going to be 5 to the left and 3 to the right you will have synthesis occurring in this direction and since this synthesis is in the same direction as the fork this is a leading strand likewise the primer on the the bottom strand is going to be 5 prime to the right and 3 prime to the left since it's anti parallel to the um, the bottom strand and therefore synthesis will occur in the right to left direction um, from this primer and um, which is in the same direction as um, the, the direction in which the left fork is moving and that makes this also the leading strand and therefore these sections in purple where um, the fork is moving in a direction that's opposite to the direction of um, DNA synthesis will be synthesized in fragments um, the Okazaki fragments and that is lagging strand synthesis so on the bottom strand it's uh, synthesis happening from right to left because that's the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime on the dotted strand whereas in the top it's occurring left to right and we have lagging strands over here
Now, in order to um, appreciate the end replication problem that you encounter in linear chromosomes, let's focus only on the bottom strand. And the bottom strand is going to look um, something like this. There's your primer and you have synthesis of the leading strand over here. And since the polymerase is moving in the same direction as the fork, it'll keep synthesizing this uh, dotted strand until it reaches the very end of the chromosome. It's a linear chromosome. And there, the polymerase um, is going to stop or fall off. However, on this side, we have synthesis in stretches um, of the Okazaki fragments. And in the next step, just as before, what's going to happen is that the Okazaki fragments, um, or rather the RNA primers, are going to get replaced by DNA pole 1. And the way it's going to happen is that each of these Okazaki fragments, since um, on the bottom strand, uh, 5 prime is to the left and 3 prime is to the right. Over here, 3 prime is to the left and 5 prime is to the right. And what that means is that um, all of these Okazaki fragments have hydroxyl groups on the third carbon so that DNA ligase can come in and synthesize uh, or replace the RNA primer with uh, DNA starting by adding uh, uh, nucleotides to the three prime end of the Okazaki fragments. However, this last RNA primer will not be replaced by DNA since there is no Okazaki fragment hanging out here offering a hydroxyl group on the three prime end. There is absolutely nothing there because that's the end of the chromosome and therefore we will end up with a gap over here. So in the synthesis of a linear chromosome the last location where there is an RNA primer cannot be replaced uh, or um, the RNA primer cannot be replaced with DNA since there is no hydroxyl group on the third carbon being made available by a preceding Okazaki fragment since that is the in fact the end of the chromosome and therefore since you are not replacing that RNA primer, there is a stretch of the daughter strand, which is not synthesized at all. And as a result, every time you replicate DNA, so for example, uh, um, uh, in, uh, during development, every time a cell is divided, you shorten the chromosome by a small amount. However, this 
is 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 clearly a, a, a problem because it's possible that um, there is some essential gene right at the very end of the chromosome and if you don't copy that gene faithfully if you keep leaving out chunks of that gene um, that could be fatal to the cell the end replication problem is surmounted or overcome by a special enzyme called telomerase and what's special about telomerase is that it carries within it an RNA primer And uh, the sequence of this, this RNA primer differs from um, uh, species to species, but this particular RNA primer, we'll say this is the three prime end and this is the five prime end, is from vertebrates. So that's one part of the solution of the end replication problem where the the linear chromosomes shorten with every cell division the second answer is that telomeres or the end of linear chromosomes consist of many many repeats And so let's say this is my linear chromosome and this is one strand. And at the end, I'm going to have a repeat which matches the sequence of the RNA primer or the, the complement of that RNA primer sequence. Repeated over and over again. And what the telomerase does is it comes in with the RNA primer and it synthesizes this repetitive DNA. And therefore, what the telomerase does is it adds, it lengthens the chromosomes, the linear end, the chromos the ends of linear chromosomes by adding these repeats using an RNA template, RNA primer that it carries with itself. And what this means is that now if we go and copy this linear chromosome so let's say I have a primer here which is CCC and I'm copying the DNA like so. When I reach the stage where the RNA primer has to be replaced with DNA, I still won't be able to do it using uh, RNA, uh, DNA polymerase 1. So I won't be able to copy the GGG where my primer was since there is no uh, Okazaki fragment 
with a hydroxyl group from where DNA polymerase can synthesize the CCC and that will lead to a shortening of the chromosome and so perhaps the chromosome is going to end up looking like this. It has shortened and you've lost the GGG sequence. However, that doesn't matter since Telomerase increased the length of the chromosome and it just added repeats. And therefore, um, whenever the cell divides, you shorten the chromosome, but then telomerase comes in and it lengthens the chromosome. An interesting twist to the story is that gametes have telomerase. So telomerase as an enzyme is expressed in gametes but somatic cells all the cells of our body that um, uh, uh, like our muscle cells neurons and so on and so forth that are not gametes don't have telomeres and what this means is that in the rest of our uh, body um, chromosomes that are telomeres are shortening with every cell division and that puts an upper limit on how many cell divisions you can have because if you have too many cell divisions then clearly um, you will lose enough of the ends of chromosomes to lose the repetitive region of the telomeres and, and thereby end up mutating essential genes leading to cell death. And that has caused people to speculate that the fact that somatic cells do not have telomerase and do not keep increasing the length of the telomeres and, um, um, and, and end up having a limited number of cell divisions is perhaps one reason for aging so that there is a, 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 a limit on how many cell divisions you can have. So the, the older you get, the more cell divisions you have, and the greater the chances that you lose all the, the telomeres, the repetitive regions, and start mutating essential genes um, so that your cells can't live beyond a certain point. And of course, it makes sense that gametes have telomerase, because um, you definitely do not want to give shorter chromosomes uh, to the next generation um, because uh, that could limit their uh, viability or survival.